10% of your dues go into a scholarship fund to provide opportunities for baseball coaches in Virginia that might not otherwise have those opportunities. Additionally, your dues also help support our annual convention, which this evening I'm happy to announce an in-person convention December the 9th through the 11th in Richmond at Tuckahoe Sports Incorporated. This year, presenters will have the option of adding live demonstrations to the presentations. Details to follow. Thank you very much. Yeah, no, no doubt. And, and so, you know, that's going on on the infield for us. OK, um, you know, as 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 we do that, like I said, Coach Cannon's going to be on the infield uh, with the infielders and I'm going to be in the outfield with the outfielders. Um, so that's that's pretty much the the infield part of it. W what do we do with the outfielders? Um, you know, I, I'd love to see some of that. You might be thinking, well, um, I think it's the most undercoached area uh, when it comes to defense. Um, I was lucky that Coach Fox, when I was an assistant at North Carolina, Coach Fox gave me the outfielders and pretty much said, you know, you run with it. Um, and so I did a lot of my own research and, and did some things that, you know, I felt like um, I really liked and I, I thought laid the foundation for us um, with our outfielders and are similar to what you've already heard, um, footwork and foundation. I'm just really big on that. Like, you can't assume kids are going to, you can't get on kids for making mistakes and you haven't coached it. Um, that's one thing I'm really big on. So if you're going to get on a kid and you're going to say, Hey man, that's not how we do things here. You better have something to go back to. And uh, that's what a lot of what we do on a, on a daily basis um, really helps our kids understand is, Hey, that's not how we approach a ground ball. That's lazy footwork. That's poor footwork. You're catching the ball off the wrong foot. Um, you know, all those things that are going to come with um, trying to coach kids in a game situation and be better, um, you know, that, that's where the foundation is laid is during these defensive routines on, on a daily basis. So the footwork and the foundation is always where I'm going to start. Again, encourage the kids to make mistakes, laugh at themselves, laugh as a group, um, you know, all the stuff that makes practice fun. Um, you know, don't, don't have them do these drills at a slow, deliberate pace just so that they don't make a mistake. Uh, and then as we start going, the, the mistakes start to really clean themselves up and they get minimized. Um, the three areas with the ball on the ground that we're going to emphasize are the pro step. I'll go over that in a minute. That's a ball that's in your lane or a ball that you've been able to get into your lane um, by the way you've moved. Uh, the glove spin is going to be that ball that's hit to your left hard as a right-handed thrower or your right hard as a left-handed thrower. Um, and it allows you to turn and get that ball into the infield, be very efficient and have something behind your throw. Um, we're going to ask our outfielders to try to backhand balls if they can. Uh, we cut the distance down. Uh, I want them to get very comfortable with that play instead of trying to get all the way around that ball. All that's doing is buying time for the base runner to take the next base. We want to get to the baseball. And once the ball is in the glove, usually the base runner, especially like the batter runner, we can, we can control um, keeping a single, a single and not turn it into a double if the ball is in the glove. And the backhand really helps with that. Um, fly balls to throw. Okay. It's one thing to go catch fly balls. It's another thing to put yourself in a position to catch the fly ball, to be ready to throw. Uh, we'll talk about that. How can we improve getting the ball from the glove to the hand? Um, again, you've heard it about six times now, but playing fast, getting out of that comfort zone. Um, and then we'll get our guys throwing to bases pretty much on a, on a regular basis. Um, on a daily basis, I'm going to ask our outfielders to throw. Um, so, um, and this is really simple here. Uh, we're just dumping some balls on the ground that are in their lane. They've got the bare hand as well so that they've got to get down underneath the baseball, get into their legs, stay under the ball, and use that pro step there. Um, our guys uh, have gotten used to it for the most part. You can see Pell. I don't like the way his shoulders turn there. I want his shoulders to stay a little more square. Jake's really good at it. Um, the, the more square the shoulders stay here, the easier chance you have to get that ball ready to throw and be online with your feet and your body 
and give yourselves a chance to do it. There's Jalen. You'll see him quite a bit as we go through this. Um, and then this is Matt. I wanted to show that one um, at the end there and, and leave it. I'll, I'll go back to that as an example um, just to say, hey, what are you emphasizing and what are you doing? Um, that's what I'm looking for right there with that. I'll, I'll show you an example. I'll go back to that in just a minute. Um, with some of the things that are kind of the finer points of what we're doing with our outfielders. Okay, this is the glove spin. I want our guys to be able to catch this ball off the left foot. Um, we've got all right-handed throwers here, so it's easy to say that. Um, but obviously, it'd be the, the other foot for our, our lefties. If we had a left-handed throwing outfielder here, he would be working on the backhand while our right-handers are working on the glove spin. Again, I want to be able to get a good first step here and get used to that footwork. Um, don't ever ask the guys to just go to the ball and not allow the feet to work to be ready to throw as well. Here's the backhand. You can see, I don't think outfielders practice this enough. Uh, we practice it at least three or four times a week um, of just being able to cut the ball down and cut that angle down a little bit more uh, by trusting the backhand instead of having to try to get around the ball. I think you have more body control here, um, and it allows you to be able to trust part of your game that's going to help you come come game time okay here's the example i wanted to show you um it's uh it's it's pretty good it's matt Schilling and and jake wilson two of our older outfielders you can see matt coming in fingers the, the back of the glove shows the camera too long and then he flips the glove down there and misses the ball here's jake the fingers are up early they're down there's a lot quieter entrance to where he's trying to go to get underneath that baseball. It's the first thing that I'm usually going to have to coach with these guys, uh, other than the footwork, is getting the fingers behind the ball and getting underneath the baseball early. Um, just kind of flipping through these videos, I thought that was a good example um, with Matt. I'll go ahead and hit play again so that you can see that. Watch how long Matt shows the back of the hand, and then he flips in there late. Uh, that's, that's how you get burnt in a game. Uh, and then here comes Jake, where you can see the gloves ready to go, and he's able to take his eyes behind the baseball the whole time. Fingers are underneath it, and his feet are really, really good. Jake's a, a fifth-year guy for us uh, because of COVID, um, and he's about as fundamentally sound, him and Jalen, um, as you could ask for in the outfield. Okay, so uh, the ball, the, the, we put the glove on, okay? Uh, we were doing a bunch of bare hand stuff to start. Now we'll put the glove on. And now we'll dial up the pace. I'll start the video here, and you can see there's a little more pace to the ball. Um, we're asking our guys to play through this, but play under control. Um, and we'll go through pretty much the same series of, of baseballs that we did um, with the bare hand. And uh, again, you, 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 we're trying to have a perfect day with this. I mean, let's be honest, this is outfield play. Okay, so once the gloves come on, I'll try to challenge our guys. So there, we weren't perfect that day. We booted one. Um, but again, I want to, I want the ball to get to the throwing hand, the feet to be ready to throw. And I'll just keep yelling, no bobbles, no bobbles. You can see Trey was late right there. I'd be all over him. There's Jake again with that early glove. Now here's the glove spin. I like putting a little bounce to this ball. Okay. So there's a lot more bounce to it. You can see there, we boot another one. Uh, again, concentration. Okay. It's easy on turf, right? Um, so I want to add some variation to it to challenge our guys. This has got more bounce to it. We want to try to get the bounce at the top or the bottom, uh, just like you would as an infielder, right? You want to get the long hop or the short hop. You see Trey got the bottom hop there. Okay, that's what we don't want. You can see we run through that ball and our feet never get ready to throw. There you can see Trey stopping momentum and having his feet ready to throw. Um, that's going to be a big point of it. Why do the drill, right? If, if you're... I mean, anybody can go backhand to baseball. I want you to redirect your body and allow your feet to work here so that these reps turn into game reps. Um, and you can, you know, your players are going to be just like ours. You can see the guys that really want to be detailed about it um, and, and those that don't. So um, here's some balls in the air, okay? This will be probably the next phase for us. And again, we might not do everything. I might say, hey, just go gloves today for the sake of time. Or, hey, you know what? We're just going to work on fly balls today. Um, and we're trying to catch this ball off of our throwing side foot, okay? So I'm trying to work through that ball as it touches my mitt. You can see like Trey did right there. Here's a great example with Jalen. I'm just trying to work through the baseball as it touches my glove with the throwing side foot and get that ball to my throwing hand. Um, as If I can cheat with my shoulders a little bit to be ready to throw, I'm going to do that. Um, and we'll try to you know, make that a point of emphasis every time of catching the ball in the box. 
And the box for me means shoulder height to the cap. I want to work in that area right there. Guys are going to be a little bit different. Um, you can see we've got a sun issue with our, so anytime I can pop some balls up here and put them in the sun where our guys have to fight the sun, I'm going to do that too. Don't know if that's a problem on your field, but um, certainly something our guys have to get used to on a daily basis. Um, and, and again, we'll vary this. This is balls over the left shoulder. Um, that's usually something we'll, we'll work on. Again, I'm not trying to gas our guys. I'm just trying to give them a chance to work on their footwork, their first step. Um, you don't have the luxury of anticipation and seeing the ball off the bat here. Um, but Jake's really good. You can see how fast he gets his hips turned there and gets out of there. Here goes Jalen, um, just probably our best athlete as far as defense goes. And this is these drills are easy for him, but he loves them um, and really takes a lot of pride in it. Now I'm just going to ask our guys to come in. Okay, how often do you practice this, right? We're just going to emphasize coming in on the baseball. Some guys are going to have to leave their feet. Um, some guys are going to catch this ball above the waist. Um, I'm trying to get as many reps below the waist as possible. Um, that's one thing that I try to really emphasize because I don't think our guys practice that enough. Um, and then how does this look when you have to leave your feet? Okay, are you able to control the ball? If the ball is hit to your backhand side, are you going to catch it and roll the glove like we ask you to? Again, I can tell our guys to do that. But if we don't practice this and I don't give them a chance to get comfortable with it, then they're not going to trust it like we want them to come game time. You can see Jalen there. He's going to be mad he didn't catch that ball. It takes so much pride in it. Um, but again, here goes one. You know, he tries to, to I, I got to challenge him a little bit. He's got such a good first step. But I'm, that's the ball I want right there is that ball that's below the waist or a ball that they have to dive for. Um, and you'll see a, a really good example here in a minute of Matt Schilling. Um, he couldn't do this when he first got to us, but diving for a ball um, onto the backhand side and rolling the fingers of the glove so that the ball, you know, you reduce the chances of it coming out. Matt did it. Here it is right here. Uh, you can see Matt's going to have to leave his feet, uh, barely gets the ball, and then we want them to roll the glove there like he did to try to keep the glove underneath the ball to give us every chance to catch that baseball. Uh, and then this guy right here, I'll go ahead and start the video. Jalen took it to a whole nother level. He loves to throw. He came in here as a shortstop pitcher, uh, so he wanted to kind of, you know, get, get a little bit better feel from the outfield, and he probably plays catch longer than anybody in our program every single day. Um, and the arm strength and the accuracy has really gotten really gotten good. But we're just we're practicing the pro step here. I'll give them the first 60 feet to kind of do whatever it is they want to do. Um, but now we're, we're practicing the pro step. You can see here I'm catching that ball off my left foot, step through, step behind and really stay in the ground as I work through this. OK, I don't like the crow hop where you come up out of the ground. I really think this has a chance for you to. To, to be more accurate and more dynamic with it will actually add the glove spin in there. Okay, so now I'm asking you to get used to that footwork and make a throw to your partner. Um, so we're taking exactly the same fundamentals that we use with, with the baseball and now we're adding it to our throwing program. Um, once we get to about 120, uh, 140, I'm gonna ask our outfielders to, to one hop their partner every time. Um, just because that's the throw that plays during the game. Uh, we want that nice long hop that our infielders can handle and tag easily. Um, and that throw is going to stay down. So we're not giving away free 90s um, because we're throwing the ball up and out of the hand from the get go. And now we'll add the fly ball to it as well. Um, so, again, we're just we're, we're taking all the variable out of it. And we're just asking you to focus on your footwork and let that footwork um, match your arm. Here's the footwork with Jalen. You can see his glove side foot is the first thing leading through the ball. And now he gets through it. And again, he's a really good, really accurate thrower for us because he wants to be. And then once we're loose, um, okay, infielders, you know, go to your spots here. And then we'll put some balls on the ground and we'll actually ask our guys to, you know, to throw to bases. Um, and they have fun with it. You know, not only are our infielders throwing to our outfielders throwing to bases here, but like this ball, for example, is going to third base. Uh, so as soon as our third baseman catches that ball and tags the runner, he's going to immediately fire it to the second baseman who's waiting on the bag, and the second baseman's going to do a, a, a double play feed to first. Um, so we've involved all of our infielders and our outfielders are throwing here. Uh, again, I'm going to put some balls in the sun uh, and ask our guys, you know, balls on the ground, balls in the air, balls to your left, balls to your right. 
Um, and we're just going to try to get comfortable here. Again, I, I don't overthrow the outfielders. We don't do this very long, um, but we just try to touch on each different area. That's a bad one there. You can see how Matt got the ball out of the box. This is where we're looking for it in the box there, where it's a, a cleaner, smoother transition to the hand. Um, so we'll do a little bit of everything there with our outfielders. Then we'll throw some balls in the gaps. Um, and we'll do some tandem relays. Now the catchers get involved. Um, you know, we're asking our guys to do some tag plays at the plate. Um, so they're going to tag the runner at the plate. They're going to get on their feet and they're going to throw the trail runner who's trying to take third. Um, you know, and, and then the third baseman is going to throw it to the second baseman. He's going to do a double play pivot. Um, so you can involve everybody here before we get into maybe some other team defensive stuff. But this is usually the last thing we'll do with our outfielders each day as we go through our defensive routine um, and we'll try to get everybody involved. So it has a really good lead up into what we're trying to do with the rest of our team. Here's a slow-mo of Jalen. Again, I'm, I'm going to try to hit some balls that, that are, that come to a, a, a stop on the ground in the gap. I'm going to try to hit some balls that hit the wall, um, some balls that carry them and bounce up high. Uh, that's a really good example of that ball being still Jalen going down with his bare hand um, and, and, and making a play for us. So, um, that's, that's kind of a, a crash course for you, um, with all of our stuff, with, with our defensive routines. Um, I'll let, I'll let coach Jackson talk a little bit on, um, just briefly what he's doing with the catchers during this time and, and some of his, uh, points of emphasis, you know, each and every day, um, didn't want to do a whole segment on catching, but, um, you know, just let him talk a little bit about what he wants to do with our catchers during this time. So with the catchers, what we're we're doing on a daily basis is mainly receiving. Um, that's what we do every day is receiving. We uh, we start out with the heavy balls, make some focus on getting up under it, getting it into the mitt, and helping them bring it back into the zone. Um, we get the machine out. We'll do fastballs, kind of low at the zone, working on getting up under it, bring it back towards the plate. That's the new thing nowadays is kind of manipulating the ball where they used to tell you not to not to move it, just to get it there and stick it, but it's a sticks, but and also a little bit of a move. Um, we'll go from fastballs on one knee, no, uh, one knee regular stance, secondary stance. We'll do breaking balls where they're working on catching those, bring them back to the zone. Uh, we'll we'll hit on some blocking. We don't do blocking a lot, but we will do it some. I don't like to do it off the machine as much because it's. It's not as random. Like when we, we do it, we try to make it random so it's more game-like for those guys. Um, and then we'll try to throw some at least once a week and get them, get them on it. It's not so much about how fast they can do it, but just catching the ball and getting it out and putting it on the bag for those, for those guys. Yeah, no doubt. And so, you know, as we, as, as, as we get into this, I mean, you, you guys are going to have questions um, and, and we'll be glad to answer some of those. We may not be able to get all, all of them um, in there, but here, here's a chance for you to just kind of jot down um, some of our email addresses uh, as we go through our nights together here. Uh, both of these nights, you'll hear from, from each one of us. Um, again, my name's Scott Jackson. I'm the head coach. Uh, I do an, any outfield play, any questions team practice-wise. What does that look like? Be glad to send you um, some practice plans if you want them, um, just as a framework. Uh, coach Cannon does uh, a lot of our, our hitting and, and infield stuff. Um, coach Williams is, is our pitching coach. Um, and then uh, Coach Jackson, Tyler Jackson, um, he, he, he works with our hitters and our catchers as well. So there's our email addresses for you guys. Um, if we don't get to your question or there's something that comes up um, as we get into this and, you know, you, you think, man, I, I really like to get more information from those guys. Um, you know, that's what we're here for, man. We're here to We're here to help and we're here to give you guys a chance to Take anything um, from us that you want. Um, good coaches are really good thieves. So um, steal what you want from us and, and take it with you. And um, if there's anything else um, that we can do, uh, we'll be glad to. So uh, up next is hitting, and uh, we'll get to that here in, in just a minute. Hello again. Heading into year four, the VBCA needs your continued or new support as a member to help us accomplish our mission of uniting, educating, developing and supporting baseball coaches in Virginia. The VBCA feels that better coaches equal better players equal better people. I hope you'll consider joining or renewing this evening. Thank you. All right. 
like um, just wanted to jump into some some questions now and and just kind of touch on some things that uh, that I've seen pop up um, in into into the chat here. Um, Chris asked, do you do you toss these or use a short fungo? Good question. Um, you you can do a little bit of, of both. Um, I prefer um, the fungo man. We're lucky enough to have one of those because it's pretty accurate and I can control it in the same spot each time. Um, if I didn't have the fungo man like we don't when we travel on the road, then I'm just going to throw the fly balls. Um, but for the most part, we're going to use the fungo and spend most of our time on the road with balls on the ground because obviously the surface uh, is going to be different. So uh, a little bit of both. Again, you don't need the fungo man. Um, you actually don't even really need a fungo. If you can't hit fungos or if you're short staffed, um, you can have, you know, a manager or an assistant coach roll these balls, toss these balls, um, you know, just stand there in the gap, throw them off the wall. Um, whatever you want to do there doesn't require um, any, you know, you, you don't have to have the fungo man, I guess is, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, another question here, um, do you guys compete and uh, what are some variations off of this? Yes, uh, we do. Great question. So, one thing I like to do is I'll, I'll challenge our guys to get in a competition. Um, maybe that day, we're not gonna do any of the, the, the drill stuff. We're just gonna go straight to fly balls. Uh, maybe we had a couple fly balls in a weekend series that we had a chance to throw to the plate or throw to the lead runner um, and, and we sucked. Um, so, hey, we're gonna work on it and I wanna challenge you a little bit here. So I'll get the stopwatch out as soon as the ball leaves the bat. And then as soon as the ball hits the mitt where we're trying to throw it. So who can get to the ball the fastest, who can get the ball in and be accurate. I'll take some cones and kind of make a triangle there. Um, so if you can get the ball in the triangle to where we can reach and catch that tag or catch that one hop and tag the runner, um, then, you know, hey, you, you stay in the game um, and, and just challenge them a little bit and, and let them compete. So um, that's something that uh, I, I really like. Get the stopwatch out. Um, and and that, that was another question here, you know, in the queue was, um, you know, do you guys use a stopwatch here? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that's the one thing in our game that doesn't lie, right? So anytime you can get it out and, and challenge some guys and, and get that, you know, as part of it to make them faster. Again, that's what this was when we started. It was, hey, how can we get more athletic? We had a lot of corner players when we got here. So we were kind of forced to try to get uh, those guys to, to kind of close the gap fast and move better so that we could give ourselves a chance to keep the ball in front of us, right? That's what you're supposed to do in the outfield. So um, we, we have a huge ballpark here. It's, it's one of the best places to pitch in America. So if, if we have a big ballpark and we're not very athletic, then, you know, then, then we're in trouble. So that's, uh, that was a big start for us. And again, use that stopwatch, get them to play faster, and they're going to make mistakes early and it's going to look out of control, but it gets better. It gets cleaned up and they say, okay, I can do this at a little bit higher level and still be under control and perform for you. Um, another question um, on perfect days in the outfield, um, you know, is what are you guys looking for? If it's discipline, if it's not perfect. Okay. When I say perfect, okay. If we, if you boot a ball in the outfield, it's two bases. Um, if you boot a ball in the infield, it's one base. So we talk with our guys every day about if we're not perfect in the outfield, now all of us, as soon as we make an error in the outfield, boom, guess what the scenario is? At, at minimum, there's one runner in scoring position, and hopefully we didn't let a run in, but at minimum, there's a runner in scoring position with two base errors. So I think just trying to get your guys to understand how I mean, nobody's perfect. We want to try to be perfect every day, but if we can strive for that each and every day, because that's what it's going to take for us to minimize the, the opponent. That's what it's going to take for us to win on Friday. You make those mistakes on a Friday night game in college baseball, you know, that, that can be the difference. Uh, oftentimes those games are one run games. So if we can understand the reason for trying to be perfect and lay in that groundwork and that footwork for our guys, how important it is, that you do this every day and you do it at a high level so that it doesn't cost us when it really, really matters most. So again, I, I want to stress that with our guys each day. And, and I just, I don't think outfield plays hard if you coach it the right way and you just build a foundation with those guys. Um, another question, can you talk about long hop throws and catch play? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we always want to keep the ball down at any time we're trying to throw out the lead runner. So ground ball through the four hole to our right fielder, um, a runner's pursuing 
second base and, and probably going to try to take third. I want to be able to have our guys understand that our infielders are at their best when it's a one or two hop throw and I can control that and contain that and still be able to tag the runner and do it at, at in an aggressive style. If it's a short hop, if it's a ball that's in the air that's high, it's a lot harder for me to reach that ball in the air and then go down to tag the runner than it would be for me to be able to have time to recognize the, the throw, the pace of the throw and the location, get my body in position to maybe backhand that ball and tag the runner. You understand that a whole lot better as an outfielder if you're forced to have to catch balls each day. So if your partner sucks and can't long hop and you're eating up with short hops each day, now you understand what it's like as an infielder to be able to have to try to catch those balls and still tag out a runner. It's not going to happen. So I think that really allows them to get better with the long hop throw, but it also allows them to understand what it's like to be an infielder trying to catch that type of throw and still tag a runner. Not fun. All right. Uh, that's all I see. Let's head on to the hitting. Hey guys, uh, one, before we move on, one last chance. If you were late joining us, uh, before we move into hitting, I want to uh, give you the opportunity to speak to any of the coaches about infield from earlier, uh, outfield, or, or the catching uh, that we uh, spoke of at the end there. So uh, don't be bashful, Henry. It's a great opportunity uh, to ask the coaches. So uh, again, last uh, chance in any kind of infield, outfield, or catching questions before we roll on to hitting. All right, great. Again, thank you all for being here tonight, and uh, Coach's great job. We'll uh, keep rolling here. <laughs>